us this. Next one, next problem type. Acid-base neutralization. Which one is the acid and how can you tell? You're saying this is the acid. Why? Starts with H. So this is the base then, correct? Yes, if it starts with an H, it's an acid. If How do we know this is a base? Ends in OH. Now, an acid-base reaction, one of the products is always what? Anybody remember? H2O. So, acid-base neutralization, one product is always water. Because what happens is this potassium comes over, knocks the hydrogens off, and they go and bond with the OHs, which makes water. Now, what's the charge on potassium? Plus one. What's the charge on PO4? Nope, you're close. Nope. Minus three. Remember, the second half is always negative. Yeah? You said plus. Yeah. Now, so what is K plus PO4 going to look like? What? K3 PO4. Uh oh. That's going to cause some balancing challenges, isn't it? Somebody want to give a try? Balance your potassium first. Put a three there. How many hydrogens does that give us now on the right, left side? Got three here and three here. So what do we got to do over here? And we're done. Let's take... This, these O's here are taken care of over here. We got three oxygens, three oxygen. If you, if you balance your hydrogens, everything else kind of trails along with it. Okay, one more example and then we'll keep moving. I'm gonna take hydrochloric acid, and we know it's an acid because with aluminum, Hydroxide. Ooh, this one's maybe difficult. What's one of our products? Water. Charge on chlorine. Charge on aluminum. Plus what? No. Plus three. Remember, column one, column two, you skip the middle, becomes three. So, what does aluminum chloride look like? ALCL3. So now we have to balance. Balance the chlorines first. What do you got to do? Three here. How many hydrogens does that give us? Six. Three here. Three here. Three there. And we got three oxygens. Three oxygens. Okay. That is, so first two problems will be one of acids with active metals. Acid-base neutralization. Next one is just going to be to identify them. Acid start with what? H. Bases end in OH. Salts always have a metal and something else. And if they don't have a metal, they're neither. Nope, oh, it'll come back. 
There we go. Okay, N-A-B-R. Salt. Salt. H-N-O-3. P-B-C-L-2. Salt. Lead's a what? <laughs> Pretty heavy metal. K-O-H. You could put an S and A and S a B. O H, metal, H, metal, H I. We'll slow down. I know it's hard to write four letters fast. Yep. K A L O H three base because of O H C O two. Why is it neither? No metal. Carbon is not a metal. MGO salt. F E C L three salt. Yeah, iron's a metal. Magnesium's a metal. Lithium phosphate. There we go. And there'll be about this many on the test quiz. I I made these as hard as the ones on the test. There's like a weird one on the notes. Like what? It was like, oh, that's H-C-2-H-3-O-2 is acetic acid. Or, as you know it, vinegar. That's an acid because H starts out. Okay. Here, Savante wants one. Too late. Well, I can give one. You sure? How about this, Savante? Too late. Somebody want salt? Okay. Now, we need to write the ionization for this. Now, there's two ways to do this. The first way is it will do like this. All right? And if you put this, this is enough. The other way... is H3O plus H2PO4 minus 2. Nope, because, or minus 1, thank you. You are correct. Well, if you rip a hydrogen off, hydrogen's a positive, right? So that means you decrease this by 1, so it's a minus 1. H3O and H positive basically act the same way. Because in theory, if I mix phosphoric acid with water, you will get H3O plus, and it will 
knock one of the hydrogens off so you got to reduce the you got to reduce zero by one so it becomes negative one now this one CaOH2 it's very simple it breaks up into calcium and hydroxide what's the charge on calcium and hydroxide is always minus one but we need to balance this put a 2OH right there so if we had let me see here oh this let's do a little more difficult one okay is this a base so we're going to rip off the hydroxide, correct? So what's left behind? NH4, and the charge on NH4 is a plus 1 if the charge on OH is minus 1. Well, just it's confusing, I think. You're not used to dealing with the NH4. So how do you know what's the ripple off? Well, on acids, you're going to take one hydrogen off. On bases, you're going to take the OH off. So that's it? Yep. So you just take off a hydrogen and OH and then whatever's left, you take it on the other side? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Don't make this hard, it's not. It's just. So, if we had HCl, what's that break down into? Hydrogen and chlorine, right? Now, this is where it gets a little more complicated. Now, don't get it, don't get excited though. If you know the definition of a Bronsted Lowry acid or base, an acid is a proton donor. So that means it gets rid of protons, and a base is a proton acceptor or receiver, all right? So, chlor which one has protons in this first example here? Which one has hydrogens? Remember, hydrogens and protons are interchangeable. Now, let's start on the left side. Does this have any hydrogens to donate? No. So what's that make it? An acid or a base? Base. This has protons, correct? Yeah. So that makes it the acid. Now, here's, here's where it gets a little funky here. We got hydrogens, right? Both of them do. Which one needs a hydrogen? Thank you. So that is going to be the base because the HCl can give it up. Now, you notice here, and I couldn't do it well on the PowerPoint or the Google slide, this is supposed to be a reversible error, which means arrow. This means goes back and forth. Wait, what does the arrow mean? Double arrow that looks like this means the reaction goes back and forth. All right. So that's what you look at. Yeah, I made these exactly the same difficulty as on the quiz. All right. Now look right here. This guy needs hydrogens, right? The Cl needs a hydrogen, so it's going to be an acceptor, so it's a base. This one has hydrogens to give, so it's the acid. But over here, it looks a little weird on, the, on this side. We know that HCl is an acid. This guy has a negative charge and wants hydrogens, so it becomes the base. Now, 
Here's how you label the conjugate pairs. On the left, which one's the acid? H2PO4 negative. That's the acid. What's its conjugate base on the right? HPO4 minus 2. On the left, which one's the base? CL is the base. On the right, HCl is the acid. So, once you figure out this part right here, once you figure out which one's the acid, which one's the base, the conjugate pairs are left acid, right base, left base, right acid. All right. Do we know that do we need another example? All right. So, let me do another example. Everybody got this before I erase? Going once, going twice. All right, I'm going to just erase the bottom half. And we'll put new a new new pair up here. And let's do H SO4 minus 1 plus uh, NaOH. This is reversible. And it becomes. Now this is where it's going to get a little funny for you here. All right. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. And this is exactly like one that's on the, not exactly, but very similar to one that's on the test. All right. Well, think about it. Look what look here and then look here. This gained a hydrogen or a proton, so it had to be the base in this case. And this is why I said be careful. It looks confusing because you got an OH here, but this OH gave up its proton. So this became the acid in this case. So it's not always cut and dry, but study this one carefully because this is one very similar to one that's on the quiz. All right? It's not exact. It's very similar. But Now, we look here. Who has all the hydrogens on this side? So this has to be the acid. This has to be the base. Your conjugate pairs are... NaOH and NaO and HSO4 minus and H2SO4. Little key thing, what's this guy got on it? What's this? Negative sign. So it's lacking a hydrogen. So it's going to want a hydrogen. And if it wants a hydrogen, it's an acceptor. That's where it gets a little weird. So this is strong enough here, this guy here is strong enough to come over and rip that hydrogen off, which makes, in this case, this a base and this is acid, which is totally reverse of what you've been thinking. 
all right and there's two of these on there one like this one like this all right now next and I'm gonna hit pause a second here you're gonna to have to read very carefully they want the concentration of hydrogen ions all right but what do they give you right here They give you the concentration of the hydroxides. But on your little help sheet there, it says 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th is equal to the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of OH. So can we find the concentration of hydrogen? Yes. Concentration of hydrogen is essentially 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6th. Now, you don't need a calculator for this calculation, do you? What is 1 divided by 1? And exponents, when you're dividing exponents, you do what? So, what is negative 14 minus a minus 6? Negative 8. That is, remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So, you don't need a calculator on this. Now, if you know the pH, all you have to do to find the concentration of hydrogen is equal to 10 to the negative pH. Do you have a 10 to the X key on your calculator? Yes. So, what you do is you punch that key and you put... 10 to the negative 10.44. So, what do you get? Well, let's see here. 10. Hmm. I get 3. What would you get? You are correct. 3.44. 6.3 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now the question is, the second question that will pop up here, a follow-up question, is this solution right here acidic or basic? Has a pH of 10. Basic. All right. So, the reason I gave you that little help sheet is if you're given the concentration of OH and they ask you for the concentration of hydrogen, you use this equation right here. And it's just a simple division problem. Well, just wait. <laughs> now, And the concentration of hydrogen, if you know pH, is 10 to the negative pH. And you have a key for that on your calculator. But wait, there's more, as they say on TV. Here we go. Oh, but I will answer that right now. Um, his name, Max, over there, had a good question. What if I give you POH of, let's make it easy, 3? What would be the pH? The pH is 11. Why? Correct. Now we know the pH. 
Now we can find the concentration of hydrogen because we can take 10 to the negative 11th, which in that case, I don't know what that would be offhand. So we got 11, take that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It'd be 1 times 10 to the negative 11th. But now, on this problem, they're going to mess with your minds here. They want the concentration of hydroxide ions. All right? But we know that 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th is equal to hydrogen times hydroxide. <clears throat> so, in this case, hydroxide is going to be, <clears throat> this one gets a little more complicated, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.89 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now, what you're going to do now is go 1 divided by 1.89. All right? 1 divided by 1.89 is 0. 5, 2. What is negative 14 minus the minus 11? Negative 3. Is this proper scientific notation? No, so we have to move the decimal over 1, so then it becomes 5.2 times 10 to the negative 4. All right. And then finally, we have a pH of 4.47. What's the pOH? Going to have to use your calculator. 9.53. According to Fortuna, 9.53. Is he correct? And the concentration of OH negative is the same. You just take 10 to the negative OH, POH. And so you can then go, oh, got to turn mine. And 10 to the X, and we get A really small number, 2.95 times 10 to the negative 10th. So this is pretty simple algebra 1 figuring out concentrations, <clears throat> but then you got to do a little log and, P and 10 to the x stuff <clears throat> for the second part. And then, <clears throat> this gets a little more complicated, but not much. All right. So, the first thing you have to do is figure out the molarity of HCl. And molarity is what divided by what? Molarity is what divided by moles divided by liters, correct? Yep. We got our liters, so we we'll just drop that in. So now we have to figure out, and I think I put all the stuff you need up there. We have 10.56 grams of HCl. We want to get that to moles. What is the molar mass of HCl? thirty six point five so could somebody take ten point five six divided by thirty six point five and we get zero point two eight nine 
moles. So 0.289 divided by 4 is, and let's put it in scientific notation, so it's 7.22 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. That is going to be this number. All right. So, so far so good. So, if they ask you the concentration of the acid, we got it, correct? Now, to figure OH, we're going to take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 7.22 times 10 to the negative 2, which gets a little funky. And I got 0.138. 8 times 10 to the what? Negative 14 minus a minus 2? Negative 12, correct? But we got to fix that. 1.38 times 10 to the negative 13th. So... And then finally, the pH is the log, negative log, of 7.22 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. So that's where you got to use your little log key. Let me check here. Oh, I gotta do this weird on my. I got. It's not a negative 1.44 because it's negative log, so it, your pH is 1.14. Is that acidic or basic? Acidic. Acidic. It's a 1. Very acidic. Negative log of this. Make sure you know how to use your EE key. You have to use that. And we forgot something back here. Oh, you need to back up? Okay. Which one are you asking for? The pH. You take the you take the negative log of the hydrogen concentration. Can you record this in the next hour? I'm recording it now. The only thing I didn't get recorded earlier was the very first problem we did. Okay. Now back if we back up, I forgot to ask. Um they ask you if this is acidic or basic, but they don't give you the pH, so you have to go and figure the pH of 1.89 times 10 to the negative 11th, so we got to drop that in. We forgot to do that one. So take the negative log of 1.89 of 1 to the negative 11th, and you get 10.72. Is it acidic or basic with a pH of 10.27? Is this acidic or basic? 
basic okay here we go how do we find the pH from POH right you you just had it backward we're gonna take 14 minus the 10.62 which is what three point three eight now this one's a two-step problem here because we got to know the pH but we have the pOH so what we have to do is do our <coughs> concentration of hydrogen is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 4.67 times 10 to the negative 9th. So do your 1 divided by 4.67. 0.214 times 10 to... So minus 14 minus the minus 9. Negative 5, correct? Now we can take, so this is, then we got to fix it, 2.14 times 10 to the negative 6. So the pH is the negative log of 2.14 times 10 to the negative 6. And... 5.67. All right. Hold on. Now last couple of things come from that lab you did and if you have a strong acid this is just going to be recognition a strong acid let me get a better color here a strong acid almost totally ionizes which means break up a weak acid stays together very little of it breaks up all right so it's going to be a recognition thing it's going to ask you which is the strong acid? is this a strong or a weak acid and you just have to decide strong acids ionize almost totally weak acids don't all right and then the other one and i talked to mrs parish today and she changed things up. And this is going to be a pretty straightforward thing. You're going to look at a Petri dish like you did the other day. And I think the best way to do that, well, let's just look at this one. On this one right here, all right, what's the percent ionization? How much of it broke up? 100%. On this one, how many broke up? 33%. Do you know why Fortuna said that? Two whole ones, one, so it's 33% ionized. And it's going to be that simple. You're going to go back, look at the Petri dish, count the beads that are stuck together, count the beads that are apart, figure percentage. And there'll be 10 beads. So if eight of them are stuck together, percent ionization is? No, ionization. What ionization means it broke up. 20%. So don't get that changed around. Do you need to know the difference between concentrated and dilute for those two? No, that's why I said I made this up before she changed it up last night. 
But just out of curiosity, is it concentrated just because it has more? Energy? Yep, it's concentrated because it has more. Okay. It's dilute because it has less. And then finally, there is some extra credit on it. And it's naming acids and bases. All right. So if I gave you HCl. All right. If I gave you H3PO4. Dude, you're naming them. You got to name the name. Um, hydrogen phosphate. Nope. Hydrogen phosphate. Hydrogen phosphate. Hydrogen phosphate. What if I gave you nitrogen dioxide? Could, oh, look at that. It is N because there's no prefix, correct? Di means two. So, they'll be similar to that. How many questions is this for the answer? It's 13 questions, but like a couple of them have parts. Like number two is like this. Oh, where is it? Come on. Number two is 10 parts. All right. It's a quick 10 parts. Huh? Yeah, it's all written. Number one is two parts. First part, second part. Number two, ten parts. Number three, two parts. Got to write ionizations for an acid and a base. Number four is two Bronsted Lowry's. And I said, make sure you know this guy here because it's like it looks very similar. Not exactly, but very similar. Then you have to do an A and a B, an A and a B, and then A, B, C, and an A and a B, and then there's two of these guys. Being able to recognize which one's the strong or the weak, and then finding out percent ionization. All right.